better than a pea, but that's enough to light up the night. This fireball was seen by thousands of people along the eastern seaboard in 1992. Many were attending high school football games, and some had brought their video cameras. A piece of the meteorite touched down in Peekskill, New York, and cratered Michelle Knapp's 1980 Chevy Malibu. I was sitting in my house watching TV, and next thing you know, I heard this loud noise. It sounded like a car accident. It was a chunk of stone speckled with iron about the size of a football. Homie, the rock was estimated at four billion years old, which is about as old as the Earth itself. And that's exciting. The peak skill meteorite did make the local news, but like most meteorites, its impact was minimal. In 1972, a rock the size of a bus blazed so brightly it was seen in daylight and was filmed by a tourist near the Grand Tetons. There was no impact, confirming what most scientists thought, that Earth's atmosphere would incinerate even giant boulders or break them into relatively harmless pieces. What was it then that violently shook the Earth on June 30th, 1908? A blinding fireball exploded over a remote part of Siberia. As far away as England, an eerie glow lit up the sky. Two decades passed before scientists could mount an expedition to find the site where the blast occurred. It was an arduous trip to an uncertain destination, but the scientists knew they had arrived when they saw the staggering devastation on the banks of the Tunguska River. Over hundreds of square miles, the forest lay flattened in vast concentric circles. The scientists suspected the destruction had been caused by a huge meteorite, an asteroid. They set out to unearth it. Long months spent draining the swamps and digging into the wasted land yielded nothing. For years to come, Tunguska would remain one of the great mysteries of the Earth. At about the same time, on the other side of the globe, a similar mystery haunted this giant bowl in the Arizona desert. In the early 1900s, Daniel Beringer, a mining engineer, found little chunks of meteorite around the crater. He drilled the crater floor in search of an asteroid, but came up empty-handed and deeply disappointed. Geologists weren't surprised, but years later, a young Jean Shoemaker was intrigued. What had happened here? It did seem like a giant wound in the earth. It appeared as though the ground had been dealt a devastating blow. Massive beds of rock that once lay flat were broken and thrust violently into the air. The rim was strewn with giant limestone boulders that could only have come from deep beneath the surface, flying hundreds of feet in the air. But like all geologists, Jean had been taught that even the most dramatic landscapes took shape at a creeping pace. Meteor crater could not in fact be a meteor crater. People will say, ah, yes, meteorites fall out of the sky. We accept that. A chunk that big. I accept that that falls out of the sky. But it was a, it was an intellectual leap to go from a fist-sized stone to a mountain and have a mountain come down out of the sky. As an undergraduate student, I didn't learn anything about impact. It wasn't part of geology at that time. Geologists are kind of folk that like to say, I'd like to see what the process is. I'd like to see it happen. Then I believe that it's happened in the past. Gene Shoemaker was one geologist who saw something happen that would lead him to question the fundamental principles of his profession. He was in his 20s when he took on a job at the top secret Nevada test site. Here he witnessed a new mechanism by which craters could be made. It all takes place in utter silence until finally the shock wave. Bam! And then it's followed with, with 
roiling thunder. It's throbbing, and you can feel the sound in your whole body. Uh, and and it's, that's a very dramatic thing to watch, too. Never before had so much energy been harnessed or released. Could nature do the same? This crater had not taken shape over thousands of years. It was created in an instant, and it reminded Gene of another place he'd seen. It was the largest crater at the time formed by a shallow underground explosion. And so I could go directly from this to Mother Nature's crater. My hunch was that I would go have a look at Meteor Crater and see what the structure was because it had never been thoroughly mapped and described. And so I didn't know what the structure was until I went. But having mapped this first, I went to Meteor Crater and voila! I was astounded that all of the parts of the crater that I could see in the little nuclear crater were reproduced here on a giant scale, including right down to the pieces of melted material. Around the crater, Gene found tiny beads of glass, rock that had been melted and sprayed out. He'd seen these too in Nevada. Some rocks would reveal a newly discovered mineral, kozite, an intensely squeezed form of quartz that no volcano was powerful enough to produce. In this microscopic sample was encoded a story of violent devastation wrought by a 100-foot asteroid hurtling so fast the atmosphere could not slow it down. Gene Shoemaker had found the fingerprint of impact. It was the first conclusive proof of an impact crater on Earth. An affront to centuries of scientific conviction and a challenge even to the professor's devoted students. Dr. Susan Kiefer once studied with Gene in graduate school. One day, Gene said, I'm going to show you what an impact is. So he grabbed a a fairly large rifle, and we... <laughs> this is my favorite is rifle. My, I don't want to see this rifle again after what happened that you recognize day. recognize this suit? <laughs> <laughs> and then Gene told me to shoot the, the rock, which I did. What happened is it just kicked. The rifle came back and hit me in the nose and broke my glasses, and he looked at me and said, haven't you ever fired a gun before? And I said, no. It's all right. <laughs> Here's Annie Oakley <laughs> with her nemesis. <laughs> The ideas that Gene was proposing not only made individual people uncomfortable, but at a gut level, whole schools of academic thinking. That was the battle that had to be fought against. And he, I feel, really did that almost single-handedly. That's a nice looking <laughs> crater. <laughs> Sue's lesson was simple but revolutionary. A relatively small object